Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Today is Sunday and it's Free Talk with Mr. B, Free Talk with Dedra Stevenson, right here with you, me, and Ice T. Welcome, 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 Dedra. Hi, hi, everybody. Welcome to you, me, and Ice T. And today, as promised, we are going to be talking about. Who's your favorite literary villain and why? Today, it's all about the bad guy. <laughs> so, I think that Abdullah has a lot to say about that. Let me introduce him first, Abdullah Kayani. He is um, a graduate student at the American University in Sharjah. He's about to graduate with a degree in mathematics, but he's, he's, he's a budding writer himself, actually, been starting some some projects, some short stories, and he's also been doing a lot with fan fiction. And he is the most voracious reader I have ever seen. And I'm not just saying <laughs> that because he's my son. Oh wow! wow, wow okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is my son. In fact, it, and I I swear to God, I'm not just saying that because he's my son. I I, I was a professional librarian for many years. And I, that's really saying something. I've never seen anyone read as much as he does. He gets, whatever he gets his hands on, he reads and he just gobbles it right up. Um, you're currently reading the Godfather trilogy, right, Abud? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So welcome, welcome to Free Talk with Dedra Stevenson in collaboration yes. with Free Talk with Mr. V. It's very, very <laughs> nice to have you on. Um, and your other um, teammates uh, that you call well, oh, yes, uh, uh, Rodney is uh, not feeling well today, sadly, and we will miss him. RW will be back next week if all is well. And and the if as we say in the South, if God if God's willing and the creek don't rise. <laughs> 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 and uh, Richard has some family commitments this week, and he also extends his apologies. So we do miss our two fellows and we hope that they get back to us next week without yes. without uh, missing another beat. So on, on you, me, and Ice T is the villains of Dubai Houston connection. <laughs> Let's jump right in. <laughs> That's <it>. right. <laughs> so what makes a good villain? I mean, we've all read, you know, our a number of pieces of literature in our lives. You know, I mean. I could start the ball rolling. I mean, some of my favorite villains. I mean, I I guess the first that comes to mind would have to be Dracula. Oh, you know? wow, I mean, I'm cool. talking the Bram Stoker's Dracula. No, I would actually before yeah, you get into it, I'd like to hear uh, a little you bit. No, from... he's. I don't know. I think that a villain. I think that a villain has is probably a tortured soul. Okay. I want to hear a little bit of um, your son. Um, tell us a little bit about you even before we get going. Tell us about you and, and then we can talk about that Dracula for a minute. Can you, you can hear me over there still, right? Abdullah? A little technical difficulty maybe? Can you hear us okay, Abdullah? Yeah. I can hear you just I fine. I can hear you. Oh, there you okay. are. Okay. <laughs> so you want to say... Okay, if you can tell us a little bit about you and your literary well, sense. Actually, about the literary, about the... Uh, anything you well, choose. Regarding villains, well, regarding villains, I think what separates good villains from bad villains is that good feel, <laughs> Della, villains why feel... Why don't you move to the living room? Oh, it's it's okay. Let him keep going because that would be a want me to pause it or something. That would be oh, an okay. interrupt. Yeah. So well, as I was saying, yeah, what separates good villains from bad villains is for one, good villains feel like real people. They're layered. They're complex. They're not they're not caricatures of real people that can be described with just an adjective and a noun. Yes. Yeah. Like if you look at like Dick Dastardly <laughs> from that old cartoon, the wacky racist, <laughs> what do you know about Dick Dastardly? Wow. Well, you just know that he's dastardly and 
he does na- nasty things that just cheat at winning races. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And he's more or less the cartoon first, villain, right? That's the first thing I'd say is one thing that makes a good villain. And the second thing is that the villain actually has to be a genuine threat. There's nothing... Yes. If the villain is not a genuine threat to the, the hero of the story, then how are viewers or readers expected to take him or her seriously? Yes. <laughs> Well, that's true. We need to that's... have menace, like menace, and a presence on the screen or presence on the page. Okay, well, what do you think about having that good streak in them? Is there something to that? No, that... there's is that, that necessary? That more, there are good villains that are that are like that, but there are also good villains that are pure evil. Really? What would be an example of a villain that's pure evil? One example would be Patrick Bateman from American ah. Psycho. American Psycho. Have you seen that <laughs> film, Mr. B? I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> there, well, there, well, it's well, based you, on a for novel. For anyone who hasn't seen the movie, for anyone who hasn't seen the movie or the book or read the book, American <laughs> Psycho is about a serial killer who's also a stockbroker at Wall Street. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a stockbroker at, on Wall Street that's also a serial killer. Wow, wow. Right. Makes him feel like a real person said he has layers to him. Right. Okay. To the world, he presents this mask of of being just a normal New York stockbroker. Right. He takes nice polished guy. He takes man. meticulous, obsessive care with his appearance to look as beautiful and ordinary as possible. He's also friendly, charismatic, somebody you'd never suspect of being a serial killer. Right. But right. really, it's all a facade. It's just an act he presents to the world. You the know who that reminds me of, though? That reminds me of Dexter. Dexter. Except in Dark Dream, Dream has, has Dexter. no good in him. None. None. <laughs> He's pure evil. But Dexter did actually. I mean, did you re- do you remember the series Dexter, Mr. B? Is that a cartoon or no? Well, that's actually no, no. That Dexter okay. is definitely not a cartoon. And, is, and, and, well, it's most people know it as a television series, but it was actually based on a series of novels called Darkly okay. Dreaming Dexter, and it's about a serial killer who uses his desire to murder to murder people who were already bad. So he decides that he's actually doing society a service by wiping out other murderers, you know, or people who are doing horrible things. So in his mind, he's actually not doing something so bad. You know what I mean? He is, he, right. can't, he feels like he can't help the urges that he has to kill people. <laughs> but as I was so, saying. Right. Well, Dexter was hugely popular. And yeah, so Bella, saying, you were saying you know, behind Patrick Bateman's facade of being good, of being this friendly, like charismatic stockbroker on Wall Street that's extremely handsome and good looking. Okay, he's a complete psychopath and a monster. Right. He's mm-hmm. not only is he racist, misogynist has no empathy is a nurse has is so a complete narcissist too right there's several scenes <laughs> in the book dude. where there's several <laughs> scenes in the book where he lures escorts or prostitutes back to his apartment okay he seduces them and has that's in the a, film too that he, he seduces and then them. it's like chainsaw time <laughs> so he seduces them and then while in the middle of intercourse that's when he strikes. That's he when murders he them and then cuts up their bodies. Ooh, and then disposes of them. <laughs> yeah. And one yeah. scene in the book, one scene in the book that just like had me. All right. Well, you know what? Struck. This is a fan. This is maybe a family program. <laughs> we uh, should, we should out. keep it. Keep all some of the grisly details. But, but another example. <laughs> another example of a villain that's good but pure evil. Is Judge Holden 
from a book called Blood Meridian right. by Cormac McCarthy. Now, is that also in a video game? That no, you it's guys just play? a book. It's literary okay. fiction. Right. Okay, literary Blood fiction. Meridian, <laughs> okay. what it is, it's an anti-Western. Oh, right. Okay. An anti-Western. It's now, in what way is it an romanticization of the Western. Uh huh. The now author, there's a wait, wait, wait. Let me go back to that for a second. There's a whole thing now about antiheroes. You know, I mean, there are a lot of people. I mean, that's another program that we're going to have at one point on. Uh, uh, you, me, and Ice T is talking about is our superheroes dead because now people are more interested in the antihero, the villain that actually becomes somebody good and decides that they're going to use their villainy, you know, for something good. So in that well, sense, Dexter is an antihero. That's a redeemed villain. A redeemed but, villain. Yeah. Okay. So no, what what about that? I mean, does that make an interesting villain in your, your viewpoint? Yeah, that could also make a good interesting an villain. Hero. But, but as I was saying about Judge Holden, mm -hmm. what makes him a good villain is well, again, he has he's layered. You can't just describe him with an adjective and a noun. Right. Okay, he's far more complicated than that. Like right. for one thing, he puts on a facade of being an intellectual. He talks extremely formally. He's abnormally knowledgeable about so many different topics. Right. He's normally, he's civil, like sophisticated. But right. behind that facade, again, he's a monster. Yeah, we'll right. see what you're, I think the theme we're seeing here is that you can't judge a book by its cover. Absolutely. Yeah. The villain a true, a really interesting sort of engaging villain is one that you don't expect. Right. You know, and it just has right. layers to it. Right. And so so it more than just be... the layers, more than just yeah. the layers, it's the mm -hmm. menace. The like, menace, right. right. How they're actually a threat. Patrick Bateman, right. Patrick Bateman is extremely fit and muscular. He's, he can overpower almost anyone just with brute force. Right. He's extremely intelligent, mm -hmm. extremely resourceful, right. extremely well connected. Right. There's no judge, no lawyer. He can't, <laughs> he can't no judge he can't threaten or bribe. So no right. lawyer he can't hire to protect himself. Right. So I'm going to ask. Let's see what, well, no, let's see what Mr. Ask, B has to No, say. because I'm going to ask you guys, because this is not my area so much so, but um, are there uh, villains that are mistakenly called a villain and inadvertently they're actually trying to save the world? What do you think, Abdullah? Somebody who's painted as the villain, but they're not actually the villain. In the well, story, what would be an example an of that? An anti-villain, yes. And, and the anti-villain, the anti-villain has a righteous cause, but will go to great lengths, and or I mean, will go to great lengths, or even any length to achieve it. So, no what would be an example of that? Right. That's, would Batman be an anti-villain? I think in some some might actually say that, you know, because Batman is sort of has sort of a disregard for the law, does he not? But he thinks that he has this righteous mission, you know, to rid Gotham of these horrible villains. Right. Well, an example of an anti-villain would be Ra's al Ghul. Raj al Ghul, yes. Raj Ghul. That would be the him. one. Oh, <laughs> Raj Ghul, Ghul is the one who taught Batman. Actually, okay. he was his 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 mentor, so to speak. Raj you know, Ghul. He they, believed he was trained in, by the League of Shadows, and Raj Ghul was the 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 master of the League of Shadows. Raj right. Ghul. He hates criminals. He wants to bring justice, law, and order to the world. But he's willing to destroy Gotham to do it. To achieve it. And even blow up Gotham from top but to he bottom. He later sees <laughs> Gotham as irredeemable. Yes, exactly. Since it's irredeemable, it's, it's, it should be destroyed. Just now, what, wait, wait. We're, since we're on the Batman world, what do we think about Joker? Because 
the Joker's in graphic novels, comic books, and we've recently had many portrayals of the Joker, the 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 classic portrayal, you know, in uh, the Dark Ledger's Knight, is also good. Heath Ledger's portrayal, and also Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal in the new Joker movie. You know, I mean, what do we think there? Also great. <laughs> Also great, right? Joaquin I mean, the Joker Phoenix is a, he's an entertaining villain, but he's also, I think in the earlier versions, he's co portrayed as completely evil, right? But maybe the Joker that Joaquin Phoenix played was more like a tortured soul. No, he's, kind of, no, no, it's like a, it's, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is like a starving, abused dog that's been... Mm -hmm backed into a corner <clears throat> and he just keeps getting beaten and beaten and abused and until, he snaps, point he on his until he snaps and starts biting and lashing out at everyone. So I, I, I think I am catching up on all of this. I'm not much of a movie <laughs> watcher because every time I travel, I leave the TV off. But when we were children, we watched the coyote try time and time again to get something <laughs> done. Yes. Going that simple is still literary, it's still cartoon in this case and so on. And we were groomed to think he's a villain. What's your perspective on the coyote? Oh, I think, no, I think the Roadrunner was the real villain there. I don't think the coyote <laughs> was the villain because the Roadrunner took Far too much pleasure in the coyote getting hurt every single time. He was funny. The coyote. Uh, Let's see I mean, your son sees it the same way. This is like mom to son comparisons. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you think, Abdella? Yeah, I think which the one's the true the villain, villain, the coyote or the, the road, road runner? runner? Is the villain. He's sadistic. I would tend to agree with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're catching on as we. Think about um, movies and writings and so on. Um, the word sadistic does fit into place and psychopathic and, and, and even someone who appears to be in Wall Street that seems to be justifiable or, or uh, a normal person of, of society, they can still be quite a psychopath and become a real exactly. naughty it really villain. Teaches you, it really teaches you Amer the book American Psycho it really teaches you that you can never, like, it, it, it really doubts whether you truly know the people around you. Right. Yeah, they exactly. might put on the facade, but deep down, you don't know what kind of person deep they really they may are. They be highly suspect, you know, even though they look like a really nice person. But then that that guy who has a mohawk or, or a shaved head and an earring who drives a Harley and has tattoos, you know, across his back, you know, might be a really think, sweet guy and might volunteer at a homeless think, shelter. <laughs> you, know, you just never know, right? I think the key here, <laughs> the key here is that good villains will have lots of internal contradictions. Right. Well, like, what about Dracula? Well, right, let me talk let me, about my favorite for read, a second. I want you to hold on for a minute because he's bringing out that one thought, right? He has the contradiction. This is interesting. Oh, okay, ahead, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, it, like the, the complicated villains, they're full of internal and external contradictions. Like take Patrick Bateman. He, like you, he's a, on the outside, he's a hands, young, handsome Wall Street broker. Someone you'd never expect to be a serial killer. He's a walk. Right. Right. That's what makes him interesting. Yeah. It is yeah. interesting. Like if it you does take, make you wonder example, if there's anybody uh, you like, on the contrary, on the contrary, if you have like a this tall, skinny man that's like not well camped, he has he's not well camped, he's looks like someone who hasn't left his house in years. He's antisocial and turns out to be a serial killer. Well, no surprise there. Yeah, he looks yeah. like a serial killer and he is a serial killer. So, mm -hmm. Makes so, you wonder no, why no do we have a certain image of what looks like a serial killer? So now, Didra, uh, <laughs> this, this 
interesting phrase that your son uses as a contradiction. Do you see that in Dracula? Is there anything that he has before him that becomes a contradiction? Well, I think that, you know, everybody, um, I mean, what people kind of miss about Dracula and why he's such a compelling character is because there is that sliver of good in him. I mean, even he's a monster and, and a mass murderer. I mean, let's not forget he's Vlad the Impaler, you know, who had people, you know, and in in supposedly in the book, I mean, this is the one who has turned into you know, Count Dracula, you know, because he defied God and, you know, when his, he lost his wife, you know, then the love of his life. And, but then the second he sees the reincarnated, you know, image of Mia, you know, his beloved, you know, all of that comes rushing back. So it's, it was never really gone, you know, capacity to love, you know, and he doesn't even want to turn her into a vampire like him because he doesn't want to damn her to such a life. So, I mean, have you, I mean, the thing is what makes him interesting is that he hasn't completely lost the capacity to feel love, to feel something good, you know, to, to have that, that tiny peak of something called goodness. You know, I mean, maybe that's the, that's a contradiction as well. I mean, one would think that, I mean, otherwise he would just be the typical cartoon villain, you know, that, I mean, which is, he is portrayed as quite often when it's not the Bram Stoker's Dracula, you know, I mean, it's a car that Dracula's in cartoons all over the world, you know, in comic books and, and everything, but the, the real villain is actually portrayed as a very tortured soul. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, because we find out with every villain, there is always something they won't do. So that contradiction remains. And it makes us also wonder what happened to the mind of that soul as they were coming up that caused them to become this ultra villain, you know? So the, the gentleman, you spoke yeah. about it was very meticulously meticulously kept working on Wall Street, but if something happened that caused the other part of his mind or mindset to be different. So sometimes it, it makes us yeah. really, yes, wonder. But as, as we close out the podcast, any last thoughts, um, Abdullah? Well, I think well, that everybody I'm, loves I'm, a good villain and, and it's a good story needs, needs that. What do you think, Abdullah? It, with the um, story is only as good as its villain. So the <laughs> villain, the antagonist, is the source of the story's conflict. He yeah. is the main thing standing in the hero's way. Okay? Yeah. And without obstacles or challenges to conquer or overcome, it's not an interesting story. Right. right. Very true. It's the or she's struggle. not taken seriously. It's the hero's yeah. struggle to achieve his or her goals that makes a story worth reading or watching. <laughs> yeah, even Little Red Riding Hood have to overcome the big bad wolf, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think that there's been all kinds of interesting takes on, you know, the wolf, the wolf's perspective of that story and the grandmother's perspective. I mean, the story changes by whose perspective you're telling it from, you know, so that's another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely thank you all so very much for um, going through this, this villainry as we spoke about it, because it, <laughs> it's a good point. No story. A lot of stories are not very well um, enjoyed without identifying clearly who the villain is. And sometimes I, I always love it when you cannot tell until the very end of some of the movies of who was the one who was the, the, the little twinkle in the eye saying it was me kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah. No, thank you. I look forward to having you on again, Amdo. I, I, yeah. This is an opportunity at this program to keep going over literature, movies, um, games, uh, video games, and so on that has each of these components in it. So uh, with you, me, and Ice-T, Dedra. Yeah, so word. thanks thanks to all of you for being a part of You, Me, and Ice-T. And I look forward to welcoming, welcoming everyone back again next week. Um, for now, have a good night and we'll see y'all next time. Take care. <laughs>